We're in a new chapter, Chapter 9, all about extending transformational geometry. This is Reflections and Isometry 9.1a. A reflection is a transformation across a line called the line of reflection. And the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of each segment joining each point and its image. So don't worry if that confuses you, because we're going to explain that some more. And the pre-image is the original, and the image is the transformation. An isometry is a transformation that doesn't change the shape or size of a figure. Reflections, translations, and rotations are all isometries. So those are flips, slides, and turns. And isometries are also called congruence transformations, or rigid motions. So the reflection of this dog in the mirror, well, that's an isometry. It didn't change in shape or size. And we learned in middle school that a reflection is a transformation that moves a figure, the pre-image, by flipping it across a line. And the reflected figure is called the image. And a reflection is an isometry, so the image is always congruent to the pre-image. And we can identify reflections. We have this orange figure and this brown figure. Is this brown one a reflection of the orange one? Well, yes, because the image appears to be flipped across a line. See? For the green and blue one, this would be a no, because it doesn't appear to be flipped. If we had a line here, this should be flipped around the other way. See? So think of your reflection in a mirror. And the surface of the mirror is the line of reflection. And the surface of water is the line of reflection for this frog. We can use tissue paper to demonstrate a reflection. So, if you can try doing this, it might be a little fun. We can draw a triangle and a line of reflection on tissue paper. Okay? And you're going to want to put a fold right down that line of reflection. And when we fold the paper on the line of reflection, we can see the triangle through the tissue paper. Okay? And we can trace that on this back side of the paper. See? Just trace it just like this. We'll end up with this. When we fold it on the line of reflection, they lay right on top of each other. See? So this is a reflection of this triangle. And if we draw a segment from each vertex to this corresponding vertex of the preimage, we'll see that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of every segment connecting a point in its image. So if we draw a segment from this point, which corresponds to this point, we'll see that the line of reflection is a perpendicular bisector to that segment. See? And if we draw a segment from this vertex to this vertex, because they correspond, then we would have this middle one, and it would be perpendicular to the line of reflection. And this vertex to this vertex is a perpendicular segment to the line of reflection. See that? So reflection is a transformation across a line called the line of reflection, so that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of each segment joining each point and its image. So these are perpendicular, see, to the line of reflection. And the image has a tick mark. The image is congruent to the pre-image, all right? So we know which one is the original and which one's the transformation because the transformation is going to have tick marks, all right? And if we transformed this again, it would be A double prime or A triple prime, okay? So this is read as A prime, all right? And we can draw a reflection of this blue quadrilateral across the line of reflection. We draw a line perpendicular to the line of the reflection through each vertex, through A, B, C, D. So it's going to be like this, and it's going to be perpendicular with the line of reflection, see? Then we measure each distance from each vertex to the line of reflection. So we would measure from C to the line. We locate the image of each vertex on the opposite side of the line of reflection and the same distance from it. So if that's 8 centimeters, then that's going to be 8 centimeters to C prime. And we do from D to D prime and B to B prime. 
and we measure, this is four centimeters, then that to eight prime is four centimeters. And then we connect the images of the vertices. And then this green one is a reflection of the blue one. And a reflection maps a figure onto its image. An arrow notation describes the mapping. So if we have a triangle ABC and we have a reflection of it, we could write this triangle symbol, then ABC, then this arrow pointing to the right, another triangle symbol, and then the A with a tick mark, a B with a tick mark, and a C with a tick mark. And we would read this as triangle ABC maps onto triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And if you see this, it's read as A maps to A prime. See? A trail designer is planning two trails that connect campsites A and B. So we have campsites A and B, and he's planning to make two trails that connect them to a point on the river. So this blue line is going to be the river. And he wants the total length of the trails to be as short as possible. So where should the trail meet the river? So we're going to make X the point on the river where the two trails meet. The first thing we need to do is understand the problem. We need to locate point X on the river so that AX plus BX has the least possible value, so it's the shortest trail. What we do is we make a plan. We're going to let B prime be the reflection of point B across the river, okay? And for any point X on the river, segment X to B prime, segment X B prime is going to be congruent to segment X B. So this little segment here is going to be congruent to this little segment up here, okay? So that AX, this distance, plus XB, this distance, is going to equal AX plus XB prime. So what they're saying is this distance to the river plus this little distance is going to equal this distance, okay? Does that make sense? And AX plus XB prime is least when the A, the X, and the B prime are collinear. They're all in the same line. So to solve it, we reflect B across the river to locate B prime. Okay, we see that it's 2.5 centimeters from the river, from the line. So we make this one 2.5 centimeters and we make it perpendicular. Okay. Then we draw a segment from A to B prime to locate X. And we locate it at the intersection of where it hits the blue line, the river, for A, B prime. See, so it would be right there. And we draw the segment and locate X at the intersection. And to verify our answer, we can choose several possible locations for X and measure the total length of the trails for each location to see if this one is the shortest distance. Okay? So... Not for A alone, because that would be a perpendicular line, wouldn't it, to go straight to the river? They want to make two trails that connect the campsites to a point on the river. All right? Our next lesson is going to be drawing reflections in the coordinate plane. It's just going to be a real quick short one. It's going to remind us of what we learned in middle school and maybe teach us some more stuff. And then we're going to get on to translations, which are slides, aren't they? And we're going to learn how to identify them and draw them in the coordinate plane. So try getting some tissue paper and seeing if you can make some reflections of some shapes. It's better to connect the vertices if the shapes are a little skewed from the line. So you don't want this side of the triangle to be parallel to the line of reflection. You could, but your lines are going to be more obvious. Your segments that connect the corresponding vertices are going to be more obvious if this is skewed a little bit from the line and these this side of the triangle is not parallel to the line of reflection, okay? You'll see what I mean if you horse around with it. You might even be able to do it with school paper if you have a dark enough marker or line so that you can see through the paper. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.